Hello again everyone, welcome back to the channel. So I have a tale to tell you lad, a whale of a tale indeed, and that's Horror Stories Working Retail. Alright, so we're going to start in a moment here, we're going to be talking about shopping carts and the Gollum customer in the pie crust at the very end of this video. Anyway, so one of the things I hate about working retail, especially at a grocery store, is we have these small carts, right? They look like a, like a little, you know, child size shopping cart. It's got a top section and it's got a bottom section. And for some reason, customers always want those little carts. It doesn't matter how old the customer is either. I mean, they can be like, you know, young adults. They can be elderly, retired senior citizens. They all really like the tiny carts and I don't understand it. Pick out a small cart and then they will load it up with so much food that they will end up leaving the store with a big cart. A lot of the time, and this is like what's really creepy about it, is I will get followed by people. Like if we don't have like any small carts that like near the door or anything, people will try to find me in the parking lot because I do a lot of stuff with collecting shopping carts and bringing them back up to the door. And, and yeah, I, I have been followed by customers. And they get like literally like right behind you, like uncomfortably right behind you. And it just gets really disturbing because it's like, don't they have anything better to do than to follow around courtesy clerks seeking miniature sized shopping carts so they can do their shopping when they could just get one of the larger carts and do their shopping with that. That would make a heck of a lot more sense. Fortunately, my store has a surplus of these smaller carts. So we're rarely ever out, unless it's during some like major event, like say football, for example, where everyone's got to hit the store and start buying up tons of food because they didn't do it the day prior to the football game, which would have made a lot more sense. So everyone's trying to get all their food at once and everyone else is getting off from work and trying to get food to prep for dinner so they can feed their families and stuff and then football and it's just, it's just chaos. And then they want those little carts because if they run, and it's like, it's not if you like even run out of larger carts. I mean, they could be tons of larger carts. They can be stocked full of larger carts, but they just want those little carts. So it's a good thing that my store has enough of them to go around. Sometimes, most of the time. I've, I've seen customers uh, actually fight over the carts before. Now, I'm not like talking about like getting into like a big fist fight with another customer who wants the same little cart as they want. No. It's more like, you know, uh, oh, uh, I, I, I saw that first, I saw that first. You know, kind of like the, uh, the aliens that, that scream, but they point and scream in that movie, uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. It's almost like that. It's not, it doesn't play out exactly like that, but that's how it kind of like plays out in my mind. It's pretty much just point and scream. <laughs> you know, when they see one of the little carts and it's just, and, and no one ever says thank you. I mean, sorry, they say thank you, but nobody ever says please. Oh, of course not. Uh -uh, no, can't say please for some reason. Mm. It's more like, hey, can I get one of those little carts? Hey, can I steal one of those little carts? Hey, give me that little cart. Stuff like that. Do I ever get a please? No. No. One time, actually, I take that back. One time, I got a please. And I almost fainted. They're like, and it was when it was younger, younger person. And they're all like, can I have uh, one of those little carts, please? I was like, yes, you may. Thank you. Thank you. And they, they thanked me back. I was like, somebody finally said please. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, I, I, I almost fainted. I was like, wow. I didn't realize that there are actually still polite people in this world, you know, who, who come to my store and want to use the shopping carts. That really made me happy. So, yeah, that made my day. <laughs> but other times, I don't know what it is, you know, and, and then it's like with larger carts, uh, there's been times where I have almost gotten my fingers broken, if not my wrist or entire arm broken, with helping customers separate larger shopping carts because sometimes the larger shopping carts will get stuck together i have found that if you pull on the top handle while you're pushing the cart that it's stuck to from the bottom part where these there's these two pieces of railing that kind of curl upwards towards where the basket's at you can usually separate them 90 percent of the time they will come apart other times the flap from from the cart that's in front of the other cart will get stuck in the other one and you have to come over and like just nonchalantly reach down there, pull it up, pull the card out, and then just set it back down. And then, and it's, and it's kind of funny in a way because most customers, they don't, they don't even think of that. They're like, oh, well, maybe there's a, a reason these carts are stuck. And yeah, it's that, it's that metal flap. Lift up the metal flap, pull them apart. 
as easy as that. But the times where I've almost gotten my fingers broken in the carts is when you get three of them stuck together. Now this is even more of a pain in the butt than it is when, this, when the two get stuck together. Because that means I have to pull up on the metal flap that's in front of the cart, the one that's stuck, that's stuck to the other one, and risk possibly getting my fingers pinched, if not broken, if somebody comes up and pulls on the cart that I'm trying to separate. And you won't believe how many times that has almost happened. And I even tell people, I will separate these carts on my own. I do not need your help. You can touch the carts when I say you can touch the carts. And people do not listen. I mean, there is a time where I even said to the, said to the guy, okay, I'm going to have my hand down in between these two carts. Which means if you pull on those carts before I've separated them, you could possibly break my arm. Because my, my, my arm is going to be in between two pieces of metal. Did they listen? No. Well, they said, like, yeah, okay, sure. And then, like, as I'm trying to pull the cart apart, they come over and they grab on it and pull on it real quick. And, I, and it, it, it grazed the, the knuckles on my, of, of my hand, you know, as I was trying to pull my arm out, you know. So they, they almost got me. One time someone did get me, and oh my god, it hurt. I screamed. And they were like, oh my god, oh my god, are you, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, that's why I said, don't pull on the carts. Don't. Do I have to draw it in crayon and show it to you in big, bold, red crayon letters? Don't pull on the carts, please. I don't want broken fingers, or a wrist, or an arm, depending on how badly stuck together the carts are. Ah, uh, but, yeah... It's a pain in the butt doing shopping carts at a grocery store. I do not recommend it. Find another line of work. <laughs> Maybe do cashier. Work in the bakery. Make sushi for customers. Stock shelves with food items. Well, then, then again, sometimes you get people asking you, hey, can you help me with something? It's high up on a shelf. I'm like, yeah, I'm a little guy. Five foot four. Oh yeah, I can reach that and I'll just climb up the shelf like a monkey, grab what's way in the back, and just pull it forward. Yep. Because th th this is happening with people who are actually a little bit taller than me, and then they ask me, can I, "Hey, can you get something that's up off the top of the shelf for me?" I'm like, "Do you see how how do you see how is my size? Do you see that I am shorter than you? That you have longer arms and legs than me? That you could probably do this yourself much more easily than I could?" Yeah, because that's how it is, right? All right. But anyways, on to the piece of resistance that you came to hear. The pie crust situation at my store. All right. Well, so this happened around the holiday season. I don't remember if this was around uh, Thanksgiving or if it was around Christmas time. It was sometime around there. So people are buying bakery items so that, that way they can make their own pie. Maybe to stuff it full of meat, you know, so they can have a meat pie, or with spiced apples, or cherries, or whatever kind of things go in pies. I'm not really much of a big pie connoisseur, so I'm just randomly throwing things together, or maybe you just put everything together at once. Maybe it's like all kinds of different types of meat and, and fruit that's all combined together in this uh, kaleidoscope of amal amalgamation of fruity, meaty goodness. Maybe it's something like that. So anyway, uh, this one customer comes through my line and he asked me to bag up his food for him. And he's like, you know, be careful bagging it up. And I'm like, I know how to do this. You know, I didn't say that. And I'd say, I, I, I'm like, yeah, sure. All right, cool. Because I know how to do this. We're kind of like, you know, they explain when we start like how to bag food. So I put all the, the heavier things on the bottom of the bag. And then I kind of gradually build it up to the part where it's on the top. And he hands me his pie crust, and he says, okay, be careful of my pie crust. I'm like, all right, no problem. So what I do is I take the pie crust, and how, how it's, like, bowl-shaped, right? So I take the inner part of the curvature of the pie crust, you know, the, in, the, inside, the inside part of the, of the pie crust, is what I'm trying to say. And then I turn that over, so that way the inside part is, is conforming with the, the bread and other items that are on the top of the bag. So that way it doesn't get uh, crushed or bent because with conforming over the top of it like that, it's going to kind of like meld to the shape of the rest of the items in the bag. And the guy uh, freaks out. He's all like, what are you doing with my pie crust? I'm all like, I'm just putting it over. I'm 
you know, it's, it's safe, it's good. And he comes over and he like just snatches it out of the bag and he's like meticulously looking at it all over, making certain there's no cracks or anything missing from it, you know. And he's like, never mind, I'll bag my own food. And I'm like, and I, he kind of like, you know, muscle arms me out of the way and stuff, you know. And, and so I, I actually had to leave at that point, point because I actually started laughing because the way I envisioned this in my mind wasn't like a disgruntled customer because I didn't bag his groceries precisely the way that he envisioned in his mind. I see Gollum. And I see, you know, Gollum from Lord of the Rings. And I see Gollum be like, that's my pile trust, my precious pile trust. And him like meticulously looking at it. Is there any cracks in it? Any chips us, stupid beggars? You know, that's what I saw. I, 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 pr I was like, oh my God, this, this, this is too unreal for me. This guy is like, like, a perfect Gollum, but he's not like talking like him. If he'd been talking like Gollum, it it would have been pure fried gold at that mo at that point. And I I was like, yeah, this is this is too much for me. I I have to take a minute because this guy is getting like way too personal over his pie crust. Anyways, that is my story in retail. A couple of my stories in retail. If you like this video and you enjoy it, to see like my art that I create here of my dark elves, leave a like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you later. Thank you.